I'm MG the Future from Machine Masters. Today I got another exclusive tutorial for you. This time we'll be covering what would NOAA 40 do as it comes to the new Drake track called Signs. You can check it out on SoundCloud, Apple Music, Spotify, etc. Um, this is a type of a reggae influence um, dance hall rhythm type track. Real short ahead drums and it's led by some chord plucks. And I like the track. And when I did my pre-analysis of it, I was surprised by how many sounds are in it, but they're um, masked or mixed in really well. So hopefully I can cover some of that for you. Um, for this particular track, let's just start with the basics. We wanna find the key of it, so it helps us find everything else. And I'm using something called Key Finder. There's plenty of programs that do this. I know Serato has a brand new program that does this now too on the fly as a plugin. But key finder analyzed the song and had it in A minor. And when I do the analysis of the chords, we will see that most of the chords are just variations or intervals of A minor. So I th thought that was pretty tricky too. Let me go ahead and play it for you. Um, I have the original muted, but I want to play a pitched version so we can all use it in this video. So here's the main chords on the intro. Um, the arrangement of this track is pretty interesting. It just goes back and forth to the two versions of the chords. So um, part A would have a chord on every downbeat, and um, part B um, it speeds up. The chords um, happen instead of every downbeat, it happens every half beat. The tempo of this is around 107 to 108. And what I want to show you is the original. So I'm going to take the original. I'm going to go ahead and highlight a loop of the sequence. I'm going to split it. And I want to take that split by itself. I'm going to make it a unique track by consolidating it. And then what I want to do is right click and then go ahead and convert harmony to MIDI. And this is just to see if we can get any notes out of it. Although Keyfinder told us it was in A minor generally, you want to find the direct notes or the bass notes so you can know what the actual sequence or progression is. So when we look at these MIDI notes and fold it, most of the bass notes are A, F, A, and E. But when you look towards the top, you'll know the ACE is a minor chord or ACE, ACE, ACE. So everything under here is just a different variation of that. When he added the F on the third chord, that made it a fourth. When he dropped the E, he dropped down the top key, so he used an inversion, including the bass as well. And the same thing over here, the same exact thing. So it's pretty straightforward, just different intervals of A. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna split it, we're gonna consolidate it, and see what these notes tell us, because it is slightly different. It, it even sounds different. So yeah, this is much different just by looking at it. So he's starting on A, and it repeats itself halfway in. Let me see if I can play it. And you can see the climbing, or like the stair pattern of the stairs going down. And even when you look at it here, um, from this key to this key to this key to this key. He's just going down one step in the scale. But the chord inversions like this one right here and these right here, there's a little bit more going on. But what I actually think is happening is that the key detection is picking up on Drake's voice and is also picking up on that arpeggio and that filtered voice in the background. So just be mindful of that when you see the MIDI. It might not be representing the actual chords. It might be everything as a mixed bag, but you can kind of guess and look at it. And just play it by ear. Play these notes by ear and see what feels right. So it was a straight ahead progression. We got four A minor chords and their different inversions. And then we got um, A minor going backwards. So it was like one, seven, six, five, or one, six, five, four. As far as the instruments go in this particular track, I picked out quite a few. 
Um, I learned this from a lot of EDM cats. They like to stack their pluck sounds. So I have one from each instrument. So this one is from Ableton itself. This one here is from Serum. And this one here, I believe, is from Massive. And the reason why I picked that particular patch in Massive is so that it makes that sign sound. You'll notice that in the chord progression on Noah's version, it sounds like there's a sign pad or some kind of um, almost an organ texture in the background on top of the plucks. So I'm going to use a sign pluck for that. And also, in this particular section of the song, there's a, a sign lead. It sounds like a whistle, but it's really faint. It's turned down really low. So when you hear the original song, um, definitely put your ear on it and you'll hear it. He's like, uh... It's real subtle and it blends in with that sign pad in the background. Um, as far as the Vox goes, which is in the background, you hear it's like a, you'll hear it on the downbeat. Let me play that for you. It starts right here as soon as the beat drops. It's like a wham, 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 wham. That's with the actual arp that's playing earlier, but it's also a separate voice sample. So I use a simple filter um, preset for the auto filter, and I also use a filter delay as well. Yeah, so filter de so auto filter and filter delay together. So when I hit one key, it does the same thing. And what you would do, this preset's called Simple Filter 3. That's doing the delay. So that's fast, kind of like the rolling space echo or that reggae type effect that you can use. Switch it to two for this one. Four for downbeats. And the, this particular preset is just to filter it out, but I'm going to have to turn it down. And then lastly, the drums are <laughs> the, probably the easiest thing to hear in this beat. It sounds like he's using a, re a very plain drum kit. So it's like a kick, like an acoustic kick, or what I call a basketball kit. And a, um, the snare is more like a rim shot. So a lot of you guys who are watching use machines, so I believe Drum Lab would be your best bet to use this. Um, for everyone else, as far as drum samples go, you can check, check out the Machine Masters of shop, but to get more like acoustic or raw sounds, look at some of the kits that uh, are made from breaks or that are um, original break loops and original break kits and just chop something up. And while I'm speaking on it, let's do the drums first. Let me see if I can find an open spot of drums so I can show you guys something real quick. That's pretty cool. You can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. I have simpler here in a blank state. I want to go ahead and zoom in on one of these drum sounds and see if we can make or use it for our own kit. And all you have to do is just zoom in by dragging the time bar down with your mouse by holding left click. So just left click in the time region and drag downward or upward. You can grab any piece of this. This is the rim shot itself. I'm going to go ahead and right click on it to split it. Right click again to consolidate. Go ahead and highlight our MIDI channel where Simpler is. Hold Alt on your keyboard and drag this down. And you could also do that for the kick as well. Since the kick kick is already cut, let's do it around here. Let's split it. Let's go ahead and consolidate it. Same exact story. You can open up a new MIDI channel, do another simpler, and drag the kit in. And you hear there's like a little bass tone on it. So you can kind of filter that out or layer it with a deeper kit so that the um, undertone dominates that frequency range. So you're not messing with the key of your track when you're using it. Um, I can also use it in Simpler. In Simpler, I have a kit already made, but let's put this on the end. So yeah, you, 
could use that and do your own drum program with those original sounds and then layer it up to kind of give it a different tone or character. So let's go ahead and knock that out real quick on this section. I'm going to go ahead and loop a small region. I'll right click in the selected space and insert MIDI clip. That gives us access to our drums. We can pull out the pencil tool. We can switch the grid to 16s. switch to grid to 32s to get this. Go ahead and highlight that and just copy it across the board. And now what I can do is I can take that kick pattern and drag it to my own kit. Same thing with the snare. I found some snare shots that I like. I'm going to try them out real quick. And now that you got your own pattern going, we can go ahead and use the groove template that I designated earlier over here and switch it to its timing. If you zoom in on it, you'll notice the subtle shift that it did. All right, so we got the layout ready to go for the drums. What I can do is uh, keep loop mode on and just drag it out because through this song, it doesn't change much. I don't think they really add any other drum elements where these chords are. So I'm going to go ahead and mute the pitched version and just have the drums. So now for the chords, it's just using an A minor chord. So the tricky part is creating a, these different inversions. So one way, of course, is to take any of the keys and while you're holding shift, you can shift it down or you can shift it up. Um, when using the bass note, at least, I would probably want to make sure that's the bottom or the root of the chord. So we can shift this down and we can copy this guy and shift it down as well. To e. And we'll change this one so every other key within A minor, aka C major, is a chord. We can use the G. I believe in his song he used F, but let's see what G sounds like. So F is the next key up this way, and he probably used it and dropped it down like that. And I can use G here. Just messing with different notes from the chord itself, inverting them or adding, you know, sevenths, ninths, elevenths, thirteens. Basically, when you're in a fixed scale of seven keys, every other key is a chord. So the more every other key you add to that particular chord becomes a different type of chord. So you add one more to the three as a seventh, two more, ninth, etc. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, I changed the bass by adding these to the bottom. So it's A, A, F, G, which is fine. So now what I want to do is layer this up a few more times with the other plucks I have. So we can just grab this and bring it down. And again. So this one's tricky because that's the sign that I was telling you about that I heard. So I'm going to take the bass out of it, and I'm going to go ahead and extend the notes a bit. And I can tell already I'm going to need to turn it down. And 
there's also a type of arp in the background, so I'm going to reuse this one again for the arp. I might raise it a bit. And what I might modify on this one, since it's an arp, is my might just keep it as a minor through the whole thing. I might add some auto filter to it. Let's see. And it's in the way of our kit. So let me go ahead and go and sidechain it with the kick. Or actually, I have a plugin for that um, the kickstart. It's an automatic sidechain. why I boosted that 1k because if you look at a, a lot of the older Drake beats where they have like the T minus lead they call it um, most of those if you notice are kind of like a sounds like a low pass filter but of course we know it's a lo-fi sampling technique and I can actually do that here too but I'm just going to use a regular EQ to filter it raised to 1k where that cutoff point typically happens in those tracks between 1k and 3k Same thing with the voice. The voice sample comes in every downbeat. It only drops once once the actual verse starts. And I already have it tuned to key. And since we're doing A minor, I can use the A key. All right, so we have all of that. What I think I want to do though is instead of playing a different chord progression where I showed you earlier it's uh, descending down the scale, I'm going to use these same chords except I'm going to um, change their arrangement. So let's go ahead and resample what we have so far. We call these uh, stabs or plucks. I'll make it a different color so it stands out. We'll go ahead and resample internally. So now it's an audio file, we have a little bit more freedom to do a lot of different things. I'm just making sure it sounds right. So for instance, you can pitch it to something else. And also what we can do, now that I have it pitched, I can go ahead and slice it up. What I'm doing is instead of a uh, playing new chords, I'm using the same ones, but I'm just triggering them faster. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and you can freeze these if you want, which will work out for you. But what I'm going to do instead of freezing them, I'm just going to mute them. Um, if you freeze them or if you actually delete them from being triggered, you'll save on your CPU usage. As you can see, I'm down to three. And I want to turn the drums back on and play this back. And I want that chop to be a little bit more uh, tighter. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight these. I'm going to go ahead and consolidate them. And because you're working in audio in Ableton, you can quantize it as well. And you'll see when you zoom in on it, it moves it a little bit. And one last thing, kind of get your drums to stand out a little bit more, is once you have this as an audio track, we can go ahead and add a gate to it or I'll do a side chain instead. So I use the side chain preset. It's using EQ to side chain, but we're gonna choose side chain instead. Audio input from drums. And since it's just a kick in the snare, there's not like a lot of percussions or hi-hats to re-trigger it. It's gonna um, pretty much duck with the groove.
But yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a lot of different techniques embedded into this one short video, and hopefully you guys um, picked up on a few things that you can use in your own productions. As always, let me know in the comments below. If you need me to go over anything or kind of explain or break down something differently, also let me know. Um, the best way to reach us, of course, is on social media. You can follow me at MG the Future on Instagram. Be sure to also follow um, at Machine Masters as well. I'll leave that at the bottom of the video. Um, thank you guys for tuning in as always. Until next time. Mm -hmm.